check. Oh, there we go. My name is Ariana Delawari. I am an Afghan Sicilian American artist. My father is from Kabul, born and raised. His father was from Penshir. He was a Tajik. My mother, oh, his mother was Pashtun. And my mother is Afghan and Sicilian. Her father was a Pashtun from Jalalabad, and her mother was Sicilian. Their story is incredible, and you'll have to watch my film to find out how they met. Uh, they raised 12 children in New Jersey, and my mother was the sixth. And she always had this dream of finding her roots and coming to Afghanistan. And so she did. Uh, when she was 22 years old, she came in the 60s, and that's how she met my father. Uh, it was a very, very different time in Afghanistan. It was not only peaceful, but it was a destination for people all over the world to come and see one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And I've heard that from many, many, many people, not just because I'm Afghan. <laughs> uh, it was also very celebratory. We have a celebratory culture. We have a musical culture and a culture that is rich in arts. And for thousands of years, that has been our culture. I was born 10 months after the Soviet invasion. I was born in Los Angeles. And I was born 20 days after my father's entire family fled Afghanistan and moved into our home. So I was born into a house of refugees and music, live musicians in our house every weekend to have these incredible parties. And I literally fell asleep to the sounds of Afghan music. I was also born when my father found the purpose of his life. He was an international banker. But when the Soviets invaded, his cause also became Afghanistan. So I was in this dual kind of world of Afghanistan in our home, but growing up as, as a girl in California. He, he staged peace protests, all kinds of things in Los Angeles. I was very close to my grandmother, my Afghan grandmother. She was like a mother to me. She used to say to me, Ariana, are you an Afghan girl or an American girl? This is a little game we'd play. And I would always laugh and say, I'm an American girl. When I was four years old, my life as an artist began. I was an actress in a play called Nanawatai. It was the premiere of this play by William Master Simone at the Los Angeles Theater Center about the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. And I played a little girl who'd lost my arm from a toy that was planted with a bomb by the Soviets. I was too young to understand the intensity of what that meant. I was also too young to understand that this literally would set the stage of my life as an artist. As you can see, uh, I was definitely immersed in Afghanistan as a child. When 9-11 happened, my life was changed forever. I'm embarrassed to say that in my life, I did not understand why my father was fighting for the freedom of his people and why it mattered so much to him. I didn't understand how significant it was. I, I felt it, but I didn't think the world was listening, and I didn't know if it was worth his time, in a way. When 9-11 happened, I understood why I was an artist for my entire life. I understood that I had an obligation as an Afghan American to educate people so that they understand that this is not a land of terrorists. And so that they would understand that this is Central Asia, not the Middle East, Osama bin Laden is, was not Afghan. There were a lot of things that I had to communicate. So I took my first trip in 2002 after my parents had moved back to help rebuild the country. And I fell in love with this land. I looked out of the plane and I saw the mountains and I, I had this deep feeling like, this is home. I met so many people and made so many friends. My mother had always spoke about the Kuchis, the nomadic people and how incredible they were. I wanted to meet them. So we drove out, and I was completely captivated by these magical, magical people. They invited me into their tent. They gave me tea. They gave me bread. The older woman said, Dorde, dorde, ukhara, ukhara. And I was like, what is she saying? My mom said, she's saying, eat the bread, eat the bread. Uh, they asked me to, the, the tribeswoman actually asked me to join them. She said, you have to take, you can't wear shoes, no more shoes and I'll set you up with one of our men. And I was like, okay, I gotta go, mom. <laughs> uh, our people are so beautiful, and what I was so captivated by was the diversity of our people, all of the different ethnicities, the faces, the features. I had to capture this, and I had to bring it back home. I visited Bamiyan, 
This is a photograph from Bamiyan. And the absence of the Buddha statues wasn't really even that impactful to me because the people were so incredible and so beautiful that I just, I couldn't believe that this land exists and people don't even know about it. It's part of our world. It's so magical and people don't even know it, about it. This little boy took me into his mother's rose garden. I just met him and started picking roses for me and my mom and my sisters. And when he gave me this rose and I took this photograph, I knew that this photograph, this rose was not just for me, this is for the world. This is for the world to see the, the generosity and beauty of our people. Bandiamir is one of the most beautiful places on this planet. It is a wonder of this world and people don't even know it exists. The people, the Hazara people were so hospitable, so kind, so beautiful. I was just completely blown away. So while we were at Bandi Amir, I saw these musicians playing and decided I'm going to jump out of the car and go play with them. And my sister and mom were like, hold on, hang on, you don't even know them. And I was like, bye, I'm going. And I just ran up to this tent and they welcomed me and they handed me instruments and we played. And I started to think, wow, you know, I've been a musician my whole life, but this should be part of my music. It was in a trip in 2005 that I visited a refugee camp. And visiting this camp and seeing children that looked like my cousins, myself, my nieces and nephews was very uh, impactful for me. It, this is when I started to write music, write songs about my experiences. And so after this trip, I came back and started to continue to write about it. And the situation here seemed to get worse. And I had always had this dream of collaborating with Ustads from this land to make an album. And so I came here with my American bandmates and we collaborated with three Ustads, two of whom will be playing with me later. And we made an album. It was very, very challenging. One of the most beautiful, incredible experiences of my life. Being an artist, we see beyond bullet holes, rubble. We see beyond facts and institutions that may or may not be working. We see the limitless, infinite capacity that each of us has to create the most incredible, beautiful world possible. We also, in the devastation, we see not only the physical devastation and the lives lost from war, we see all of the potential of what could have been from each one of those lives. All of that that we don't even know about was lost. In this time, when there are over seven billion people on the planet, we have limited resources. Afghanistan can teach the rest of the world a very important lesson about resourcefulness, generosity, hospitality, living close to the land. We need to learn this lesson. Our world is in trouble. As an American, I know that this land can learn from us. We have embraced diversity. We are one. I feel that as Afghans, we need to see beyond our tribal differences and become one. We need to have compassion as, as a world. The deeper my love has gone into myself for Afghanistan and for my people, the deeper my love becomes for the whole world for this incredible planet that we live on. We need to revere this planet. We need to revere our resources, each other. We need to treat each other with compassion. So Afghanistan has taught me the most significant lessons of my life. It has brought so much joy and so much beauty and so much richness to my life. And I will never be able to repay all that I have been given. So this song, this is a song called The East. I wrote this song from the perspective of a young boy who becomes a talib. He's a, he's a refugee and his mother is a widow. This story is about Afghanistan, but this, I think this story pertains to the world right now. The East as in here and Central Asia, as well as the Middle East. 
where any suicide bomber, any child could end up a fundamental, fundamentalist because of circumstance. They cradle the valley of green. I'm not untrue, I will not hurt me. Come from the mountains, I come from the east. And with you beside me, we won't disagree. And with you beside me, we will have peace. I am not untrue, I will not harm you. I'm the east. I am not untrue. Shaking and 